never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a king is lame Never seen a cancelled death Never seen all the poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a king is Hey everybody! It is time once again for the Big C and Bigger T podcast. Coming at you once a week, <clears throat> 94 straight weeks. 94 straight weeks of wow. podcasting excellency. Podcast magic. 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 Magic everywhere. Like you would find on the strip in Las Vegas. Mm. Magic. Never mind. I don't, hey, Clint, how you doing this week, man? I'm good. I'm good. I think, you know, podcast a little bit delayed this week because I think your boys, this podcast can be brought to you by Mucinex. Definitely. Like whatever The Dollar General version of Mucinex, whatever that is. And Ricola. Goodness, yeah, it between is. those two things, that's how I'm surviving. You've been finding it for a couple of weeks now. This is my yeah. I just can't. I can't. Of course, I'm a big dummy. I, I'm going to the doctor Thursday, but um, I hadn't gone to the doctor or nothing. No, I haven't. Yeah, either. I got to go get the the Beyonce needs to sing uh, medicine. I guess. Oh yeah, that'd be good. You ever, you ever watch Parts and Rec? I have, but I don't remember that one. It was when they had flu day, mm. and um, Leslie had to go do a like a speech or something that night. She went to the doctor. She said, "I need the Beyonce needs to sing tonight." Medicine. Sorry. So, yeah. when, now, which one is your favorite episode of Parks and Rec? Because I remember you you like to quote <laughs> that. Look, I want all the bacon and eggs you have. You may have misunderstood me. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> Bacon and eggs. I oh, want Swanson. all the bacon and eggs. He says, um, I like all the bacon and eggs. Well, and it's just so funny because it's set up. He's waiting to get to that steakhouse in yeah. Indianapolis that night. And then he gets there and it's closed down. And then he goes to Rob Lowe's house and he's got, he grills mushrooms and feeds him salad. You know, of course, Ron Swanson won't eat salad. Anyway, I love that one. I love the one where, uh, uh, another flu day one um, where Andy's trying to look up the symptoms on uh, for Leslie to find out if she's got the flu and he says uh, it says she has connectivity problems <laughs> he was just reading the talk you know? <laughs> and they say that was improv that he just read that <laughs> when they did it because it's one of the like known for one of the greatest lines ever in sitcom, just because it. Um, that he had lived it anyway. No, that was no, a great show. My, my favorite's the one where um, the secretary—I can't remember her name—Plaza's um, Aubrey Plaza's character yeah. schedules yeah. all his meetings on March thirty-first. Yeah, but she's like, "I didn't think it was a real day." That's right. Yeah, I like when uh, Tom he says he says. One time my refrigerator went out. I just moved. <laughs> anyway, great, great show, great show. It was. It was. Well, it's it's uh, Christmas. You getting ready for Christmas? Yeah, I'm getting ready for Christmas. It is. It's weird how that's changed because you know, I'm a, I, at least you know, at least this is what my ex wife said in court. She, I'm a selfish individual. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, I used to be all about you know what I would get. You know. What I, now I'm older. I'm 46 years old. I got kids, got stepkids, married, and it's all about like literally. I I'm an adult. I'm 46 years old. If I want something, you know what I'm gonna do? Go get it. 
I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go buy it. I mean, there's not, of course, there's stuff I want that I don't have, but I don't want for a lot. If I need it, I go buy it. Mm. So it's more about, you know, now, you know, getting going and, and getting the presence for other people and seeing the joy that hopefully, you know, it brings them. Now, now, when you were a kid, was there ever a Christmas that you got something that you just, something that just sticks out in your head? Like, oh man, I wanted this. I got it. Yeah, there, there's a couple. Um, my first BMX bike. Oh yeah. I lived in Clinton and literally <laughs> could buy, you know, my, my I kind of lived in town. And so my bike was my transportation. I could go anywhere and it wasn't even a it wasn't a name brand in fact the place we bought it from I think lost the stickers that go on it so I didn't even have stickers on it that said the brand brand on it or whatever it was like orange but man that thing and then my first uh when I got a pellet gun I'll never forget it was kind of snowy that day right and so we lived in a house that had sliding back glass and I opened it. My mom had went back to her bedroom was, we were getting ready to go to my grandma's <clears throat> and there was a bird on a power line. You know, my mom told me don't shoot birds because it's illegal, you know? And so, you know, and I'm about eight, eight years old, something like that. So I put a pellet in my pellet gun and I line up and I shoot. And it was a long way across my backyard. And I hit the bird. Like I didn't think, I never thought I was gonna make it. Like it just fell straight to the ground. And dude, I was so scared. I was like, the cops are gonna come get me. They're gonna come get me for killing a bird. But they didn't, thankfully. I survived and a dog probably ate it. But probably. What about you? Was there a man? You know, it, it, it's weird. Because I remember, you know, the one that always sticks out of my head because it was so simple. Like, it just reminds me how how young and innocent I once was. But all I wanted was a fire truck. I used to want to be a fireman so bad. Mm -hmm. As I grew up, I wanted to be a fireman. That's just what I wanted to be because it was like, mm -hmm. okay, it's so cool. So I remember just getting a fire truck and then opening up Christmas morning. It was before we'd ever moved in that house. We, I think we were living in a, in a single-wide trailer. Um, on my mom and papa's property, mm -hmm. you know, and then just opening up, having the fire truck, it was exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then they did get me those, like when I was in college, I believe they did get me those sweet golf clubs. Oh, they got me those black cat replicas. Yeah, yeah. I and, still got my set of those. You know, and I probably do, my, I probably, they're around here, they're somewhere. I have no idea. I haven't played <laughs> golf in a long. Yeah. I was, I enjoyed, you know, when it came to golfing, I enjoyed, you know, going, hanging out with you, having fun, spending three hours, you know, uh, roasting Robert, um, what, whatever we would do, <laughs> whatever we would do. But, I, but man, that, that fire truck and those golf clubs, they stick out of my head. Now, was there ever a gift you didn't get? There was one year, and it made worse, because you're, you're an only child, so you never – had the misfortune of seeing your brother get something you really wanted. better than you yeah no I never yeah. yeah because you know when we were when we were 12 13 14 GI Joes were the toy yeah you were that was the toy that was the end all be all of toys was GI yeah. Joes mm. um and they had struck them down where they were a little bit more and me and Paul and Dusty we all collected them one year for Christmas, I didn't get any G.I. Joes. Any G.I. Joes. Yeah. Paul got two G.I. Joes. Oh, man. And at the end of it, I was just like, and mom always went through great. Mom and dad would always try to make sure it's as fair as possible. That if they, you know, if I had 10 gifts, Paul had 10 gifts. They spent about $200 on Paul. They spent about $200 on me. Yeah. They always did their best they could. Because you're in a no-win situation when you have two boys close to the same age. Yeah. You're always going to thank you playing favorites and all that. Yeah. I just remember going, I didn't get any G.I. Joe's. Hmm. Mom started crying. <laughs> like, I feel so bad now because I know, you know, 
because you see that as a parent as we got older, how like how hard they were trying. Yeah. And how just what a, you know, a turd sometimes we as kids could be. Yeah. Yeah. My, my gift that I never got is very similar, but I wanted the G.I. Joe aircraft carrier. Yeah. I wanted it so bad. That's the I holy grail of toys. I asked for it for like three years in a row. Yeah. Okay. And so when that's your number one gift three years in a row, that's <laughs> something you want. But the problem was <clears throat> uh, my neighbor had one and my mom saw it. I showed it to her. You know, we were over there one night and I said, mom, see, this is what I've been asking for. Well, the problem was it wouldn't fit in my bedroom. Like it would have, it would have taken up all my play space in yeah. my bedroom because my bedroom was pretty small and we had a nice little house. It just didn't have, it didn't have big rooms. Right. And so <clears throat> as an adult, you know, I thought, you know what, I'm going to look up, up on eBay and I'm just going to buy me one. <laughs> no, sir. For like a thousand bucks. Yeah, they're like, oh, that's outrageous. Yeah, especially if you get all the parts with it. You can get them a little cheaper when they don't have all the parts. But if I'm going to buy it, I want all the parts. Anyway, well, um, it's been a crazy week in college it's been, sports. It's been a just an absolute insane week. You Lots know, of stuff I, happening the Razorback. Is, yeah, you know, and it's funny. I, I went back and I was uh, – and I, I was showing somebody something on on the first podcast I think we ever did with Patrick Netherton. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, we were talking to NIL, Wild Wild West, all that. And we're like, and then and that goes, you want to talk the Wild Wild West. The transfer portal is the Wild Wild West. Yeah. And this was before it got crazy. It was just us two years ago almost. Mm -hmm. Two full transfer portals ago. Say this is going to get crazy. Yeah. And oh my goodness, is it getting, I mean, it is. When you tie in and then just tying in the NIL with it. Yeah. You know, um, but, you know, just to kind of update on where we're at with the Razorbacks, we're, um, we are recording this on National Signing Day. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's Wednesday, the, the 21st. Um, now the big changes, of course, is coaching changes we've had at Arkansas. We've lost we lost Odom. We lost Dow Loggins. Um, Odom went to UNLV, hired Bobby Petrino as his offensive coordinator. So what do you think of that hire? I think that um, – I think Bobby probably could have got a bigger school as a coordinator, but I think it will be a good place for him to – I don't think he was going to get back into big time D one <laughs> at Missouri State, just because I don't think he can recruit the talent there to do it to to do good enough to where a big time school is going to say, yeah. you know, you know, a power five school <clears throat> is going to come to him. I think if he goes to UNLV, does well there, then maybe gets a power five offense coordinator position. And then, then he might could get back into. I think, I think he had to kind of punt and go. Yeah, well, he finished five and six at Missouri State, which I think they come in. I mean, which has to be a disappointing season. Now, who knows? They may have had a ton of injuries after they played Arkansas. Yeah, because I think Arkansas was their Super Bowl. Yeah, I really do. But. <clears throat> But who knows? I mean, so he didn't exactly light the world on fire last season at Missouri State. And now you've got – so I think it's a great hire for Barry Oldham if, you know, Bobby's been humbled a little bit. Well, you know, the rumor was that he was going to go call plays for Jimbo. Yeah, that wasn't going to work out. I, well, it, it's kind of like – I think that's the situation because, you know, we talk – when you have a head coach that's been – no, who's called his own plays, offensive coordinator, because we had that at tape with Mullins and Ricono, where, you know, they butted heads quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, even Ricono alluded to it a little bit on the show. Like, yeah, the other day it was Steve's way, and we didn't always see eye to eye, but 
Um, well, and, and, and your offensive coordinator is a guy that's used to being that guy in charge. Yeah. So that, that was not going to work out good. That wasn't going to work out good at all. No. When the offense started doing good, then people would start saying, let's just move Bobby to court to coach. Yeah. You know, that, and that's what was going to happen. I mean, that's the same. It's similar, similar to what Houston Up went through with, you know, good. with Gus, except Bobby's a proven coordinator and Gus wasn't proven yet. Um, you know, as far as in D1, you know, college football. Yeah, so, and it's going to be, and it's hard when that's something you enjoy. Yeah. You know, if, if you enjoy calling plays, like Houston Nutt loved calling plays. Mm -hmm. That's why he didn't want to hire an office coordinator for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, and Jimbo Fisher loves calling plays. Yeah. And so, Jim, it's going to be hard for him to give that up, even though, you know, it's a little bit easier to override Gus Malzahn, who's straight out of high school, as compared to Bobby freaking Petrino, yeah. who's taking schools to BCS bowls. and Yeah. Yeah, and then, of course, Dow went to South Carolina, um, you know, which most people believed he was our offensive coordinator in ranking and, and waiting. Um, good move for him. Um, <clears throat> he's He's got some history with Beamer and uh, a little bit, and then um, he's – I, th I think he'll do well there. He's got a good quarter, you know, a talented quarterback to work with. And then he he took one of the best tight ends in the SEC with him, and Trey Knox, um, which hated to see that happen, of course, which we talked about that some last week. Um, now, did you see Shane Beamer's press conference? Yeah, he had he had to defend him. Right. Because the media was, was coming down pretty hard on Dow. Well, and he was like, I, I mean, I loved it. I, I loved him defending him and saying, he, you know, and I think he. Well, when when you're Shane Beamer and you can get in front of the media and say, um, did y'all call Bill Parcells about him? You know, did y'all call all these other, you know, famous coaches out there and talk about him um, and, and hear them talk about how good he was? Did y'all? Did y'all talk to Alshon Jeffries about him? You know, one of the best players to ever play at South Carolina, you know, that, you know, was one of the ones that was giving him a reference. And, you know, so uh, anyway, and then, of course, to replace them, uh, to replace them, of course, they, uh, they get, first of all, Morgan Turner. Um, You see what I'm talking about? Um, I'm not. Are you not? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, but um, they get Morgan Turner. Uh, Morgan Turner, uh, that is his name, right? The tight end yep. coach at yep. Stanford. And of course, Stanford with Shaw stepping down. Morgan was looking for a job. Here's the thing, Clint. Morgan Turner – in some ways, he's like a Sam Pittman. He has – he's considered one of the best tight end coaches. I mean, Stanford has put a lot of tight ends in the NFL. And then he already has a love and a connection to Arkansas. He's got family in El Dorado. They have a lake house on Lake Washita. <laughs> okay. Um, he's – and he said he remembers uh, he, when he told his kids where they were moving, he showed them the logo, the Razorback logo. And his little boy said, I remember seeing that when we go to the lake. He said, and he noted, you know, he remembers, you know, being in El Dorado and seeing, um, seeing Razorbacks on businesses down, you know, five hours away, things like that. So, um, and he's recruited in Arkansas. He, he recruited Henry. Right, yeah. He was in high school. He, you know, he's recruited in this area. He's so uh I think it was a I think it was a great hire. No, I do too. And we did we inked at least one of our tight end commitments, one of them decommitted. Um, which you know, 
isn't to be unexpected when you have a change. But I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, we really need to sign three tight ends, you know? Yeah. Well, but so the other one, the one from I think, um, and then we get Travis Williams. Yep. He's a former, uh, played for Auburn, played, uh, was a really good t- uh, linebacker there. Ben Gus's defensive coordinator at UCF. And um, he, he checks a lot of the boxes. He's energetic, supposed to be a good recruiter. Um, he's, Pittman said he's wanting someone that's multiple, but it's going to run more of a four man front, which you know, a lot of fans have been wanting, which if you look at our team, you know, look at the team with Landon Jackson and Jordan Dominic. Those are those are four three defensive ends. Now yeah. Jordan can play both. Landon Jackson's a four three defensive end. You know, he's a, he's a guy that you want to be able to spread him out a little bit on on that one side, and you know, run some overs and unders with him, and and uh, let him just out quick to the tackles. And you can do that in a three man front. It's harder to do. Um, so I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm excited about him. He seems energetic. Uh, he seems like a guy that the kids like, you know, I saw a video of him when he was an assistant at Auburn, he got up and did a freestyle rap, you know, at the end of practice or whatever. I mean, it was just a few years ago when he was younger, but, um, did you watch the press conference with Pittman? And I, I did. And I, I did. I watched the entire thing when he introduced both of them and I, my favorite part of that was, you know, to hear the tr- the plane tracker stories. Yeah. He said, I felt bad. I guess, was it Temples? Maryland. Huh? Maryland's. Maryland's. He goes, I've never met the guy my entire life. They were there seeing that recruit, which signed with Arkansas today, the defensive end from a pit. Fans had tracked the plane to Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, Baltimore. So they thought they were talking to him. So then they flew to Tampa. Yeah. That way they didn't go – they weren't in the same city as the UCF coach. Yeah, with Turner down there and then then went over and met with Williams. Yeah, you remember the details better than I did. Um, but, yeah, but so they were all about. But, you know, in the same way, they do the same <laughs> thing when they're hiring a, the head coach. I remember that. And then, uh, Well, and it was um, – <laughs> But there are a lot of rumors the about out. that press conference, Clint, was – the interaction between Pittman and those two guys. Yeah. You could tell they're already building a good friendship. I mean, they were joking around. They were, it was lighthearted. You know, yeah. Pittman was talking about when he was on Zoom with him, I think. And uh um when and he got on Zoom with his with William's family and was, you know, telling them about, you know, that Oh, the snow. It gets snow sometimes in Northwest Arkansas. And he said, man, that's all you had to tell my girls. He said they were excited about that. And so I think it, we'll see what happens. You know, we, we won't know. Um, and then, of course, the big one, the um, strength and conditioning coach, which I think we talked about that last week. We did. I had a hire for him. So, huh. you know, the proof will be in the pudding when these guys get out there, yeah. you know. You know, and, I, and me and you were talking before we got on, and I feel like with Turner, we got who we wanted. Mm. And who knows about the defensive coordinator? I think a lot of people thought it was going to be uh, Ron Roberts that went to end up going to Auburn. Who was it, Baylor? Yeah, it, it was going to be him. And then, you know, some people may say that Auburn scooped him out from under us. Who, I'm, who knows? But I, I'm excited. You know, Travis Williams won me over in the press conference. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, there's been a lot of people that win the press conference. But um, but they really seem like they won the press conference. I, and Sam did a lot of it. You know, obviously, you know, Michael um, Skier, how do you say his name? Skier. Yeah. Skier. He's going to call the plays during the bowl game. And I think Williams is kind of staying out the way, just kind of observing so who knows? I mean, there's there's rumors out there that he's going to go to UNLV as D coordinator. Yeah, and so because he was Pittman was pretty non-committal. <laughs> yeah, because they asked what uh, what, what position Williams would be coaching, and and he said um, 
we're going to decide that after the bowl game. Yeah, he yeah he kind of cut them off there, and so there yeah. may be some more replacement coaches. I still, I would like to see Pittman get an older coach with a head coaching experience. Yeah, on the staff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, there's lots of ways to do that nowadays because you can you can get an analyst, you know, and that way. There, someone that's not maybe on the field, but <clears throat> that'll be in meetings with you. You know, you get a guy, you know, find someone, you know, like a, like say, I mean, you know, bring in a Shaw, you know, or, a, you know, somebody like that that, that can, uh-huh. you know, that can help you out. Um, you know, like Texas is done with Gary Patterson. Um, I mean, Nick Saban got a rehabilitation center in Tuscaloosa. I mean, not that, you know, Nick Saban needs a experienced head coach to be around him. It's nice to have, you know. It is. And, you well, know, it's for Pittman just because, look, he's an experienced coach, but he's not an experienced head guy, you know. Well, he's getting there. I mean, this is this is, this is is year oh, four. Man. This is year but four. But, so it's, but wouldn't you say, though, that any weaknesses we saw in him this year – had to do with inexperience as a head guy? I, I think there's some decisions he'd like to have back. Um, but it wasn't, you know, he had Barry Odom there, and he made he made the decisions regardless. Yeah. So I don't know. It may. And I'm not saying there's not going to be those at times, and I'm not blaming it all on that. Oh, no. It's it just not. nice to have somebody, have somebody there. And I think Odom was that for him, you know. Uh, you know, because he's you know he's having to deal with negativity for the first time as the head guy. Yeah. You know, this this last year was the first, his first time dealing with negative press. He's never had to do that as the head guy. No. He's been, always been the assistant dealing with that. You know, and watching the head guy go through it. So, I think having someone, you know, a, someone that's been through that kind of thing that's a you know, maybe not necessarily older, but just has some wisdom to him. Yeah, I th- I'd like to I'd like to see him get that because I think that's what I think that was the problem with Orgeron. I don't think he had anybody like that. I may be wrong. I, I don't know enough about his staff, um, but I think when he started losing some of his trusted coaches, you know, he had some guys that were that were. Uh, head coach material, Aranda and Brady, once he lost them, that's when things started going downhill for him. And um, I think I think Pittman, I, I just think Pittman needs that. So, anyway. No, and, and, you know, and maybe Coach O would be the right one to get in there as an, as an analyst. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, Coach O is a fun character, but um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I don't know too much about his wisdom. <laughs> um, um, now we've had some, we've lost some recruits, um, and you're going to have that with coaching changes. You are, yeah. Uh, you've had a couple tight ends back off. Uh, you've had a big wide receiver tease. A four star, uh, he's uh, no longer committed, and then one that I was really excited about the big he's only a three star, but that big old defensive lineman from Georgia that they uh, said yeah. was doing backflips and stuff when he was visiting at, at Fayetteville, he decommitted. Which, uh, I'll tell you, one, one school that's going in and, and trying to poach a lot of players is Auburn, yeah. You Freeze has jumped in, and he is he is poaching. Poaching season is open with him. You Freeze is a terrific recruiter. Yeah, he really is. He is he is the opposite of Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin's not a very good recruiter. Great X is the most coach. Yeah, I would say you know. He's the exact opposite. You freeze. 
You know, the man put like a top five recruiting class together at Ole Miss. And that was without NIL money. What? Yeah. He had some other money. Yeah. <laughs> had some other money. Yeah. He had some other now money. He's got, he's got all that legal money behind him. Yeah. Now, speaking of all that legal money behind him, now, I, I shared this on the Facebook page. You know, and I think on Instagram, there was a report from – from a coach, and you, um, I can't remember the coach's name. I think it was the head coach of Pitt City. He goes, I know for a fact that the North Carolina quarterback Drake May had a five had a couple five million dollar offers to transfer. Do you believe it? Yeah, I, it's, I, well. It's, here's here's the other one, Clint. Go ahead. And I don't know if we've—I don't think we've talked about it on here, but there's also a rumor that KJ, our captain, our quarterback, got money offers from two other SEC schools, Auburn and Ole Miss, and that Arkansas had to match it for him to stay. Now I don't know if that's true. It's a rumor. Right. Yeah. It is a rumor. Okay, it is a rumor. But you could see that happening. No, you 100% could. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, what was it? The the wide receiver from Pitt that ended up going to USC? Yeah. There was a rumor like, look, I'm getting a million dollar offer. Yeah. If you'll match it, I'll stay. Yeah. I can't match it. You know, it just. He had, he had won an award from the best receiver in NCAA football and leaves that school that helped him get that. Yeah. <clears throat> to go to another one. And yeah, I it's crazy. It's crazy. And then, you know, we've had some kids transfer out. Yeah. So far, none of them, besides I think Knox maybe went to a situation that he may see as better down the line. Just because um, I think Loggins, if if we don't know for sure what's going to happen, if Loggins uses the tight end more than what Arkansas has done, right. then it may have been a better situation. But Miles Slusher went to Louisville. That's not – that's not a better situation he was in at Arkansas, I don't think. Uh, I don't think Keetron Jackson's in a better situation at Ole Miss. I mean, at Baylor. Did he go to Baylor? Baylor, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> uh, Our boy Reed Bowers at Memphis. Well, and you, can, you can't believe Reed because Reed was in a situation where he was sharing the punter duties. Yeah. In holding, you know, I don't think anyone goes to college to be like, I want to be the holder. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, now, he enjoyed holding. He did, but, I mean, but still, you know, he would probably rather focus on punting and other you know, things. And, and it was obvious they were trying to get Fletcher in yeah. the game as much as possible. Right, yeah. And and some of that was Reed did do real well at first when he when they took Fletcher out. But then he had some struggles toward the end of the year. And so then it became of who's the hot hand, you know, whoever's kind of punted better recently, that's who we're punting this this next punt. And it was uh, because both of them was having some issues. Um, but other than that, Reed has been so consistent. And so hopefully he does well at Memphis and, and hopefully he can um, get a chance in the NFL. Um, it does look like um, Luke Jones is not coming back, but he is going to play in the bowl game. Right. Um, we still don't know on Matt Landers. I don't think Matt Landers can come back. I think this was his super senior season. Oh, was it? I'm all, I'm almost – I'm a good 90% sure on that. But he is going to – so far, I'm hearing that he's playing in the bowl game. Yeah, I've heard that too. I've, he he was in the he was in the depth chart. Yeah, you know I'm a, I'm excited about I'm excited about the offensive line next season. I really am. 
because <clears throat> Luke Jones, them other guys, Stromberg, those those are Chad. We're gonna miss them. Huh? We're gonna well, we're gonna miss them. We're gonna miss them, but I'm excited about seeing the offensive lineman that Sam Pittman has brought in. You know, they did a good job of turning those guys' bodies around from where Chad Morris had them, where he wanted them mm-hmm. small for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, you had Stromberg starting at guard in the SEC at 260 pounds. Yeah. He's over 300 now. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about seeing Chambly, Emmanuel, um, some of these younger guys. Uh, see who see who goes in there. The opportunity is going to be had. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, 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 you've lost three of your starting off as a lineman. There's opportunity out there for these young guys to go out there and win some jobs. Yeah. And and that's why I think it was the bowl practice is huge because them guys are going to get in mm-hmm. quite a bit more. I agree with you. Um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see we see these guys step up. Um, you know it it'll be interesting to see what guys he gets in through the portal. You know we got a we got a commitment from a, a I believe a linebacker a John Morgan. From so he's, that's the defensive end from Pitt. Yeah, defensive end. Sorry, sorry. Defensive end, 6'2", 265. Um, so that's just another weapon there at the end. Uh, I already feel good about our hens. That's a position I feel pretty good about anyway. Um, now, Isaiah Nichols, we're going to miss him. Um, we're we're going we're gonna to miss him with tackle. But you still feel good about Campbell, Terry Hampton. You know, could have came back, but he's going pro. Is he playing in the bowl game, or he just announced he's going pro? I, I, I don't. I think if they announce they're going pro, they're not going to the bowl game. <laughs> okay, that's why you haven't heard anything from Landers or Luke right. Jones or anything like that. Besides just the coaches talking about them, um, you haven't heard anything official, and that's what those guys are trying to. But um, I think that means he's going to sit out. Um, and that makes you, and I'll tell you, that makes you appreciate the Dalton Wagners who are going to play in that game. Yeah. Uh, so that's – and that's a guy, aren't, you know, wearing that, that captain tag for a reason. Yeah. So definitely proud of him. Um. What else? What's some other football news there when they talk about? Did you see, um, well, Cat, one of a thing of the sea on the chest, Jalen Catalan. Mm. Um, he's visiting Austin, Texas. Yeah. Not happy about that, but. Yeah. You, know, um, you got to root for him as a kid, you know, that he, he finds somewhere. The main thing, yeah. his problems has been health. Yeah, just staying healthy, uh, proving that them shoulders are going to be okay. I mean, he pretty much had to have his shoulder rebuilt. Yeah. And I can see, you know, because Pittman said in the press conference, I told him you're going to do it, just go ahead and go pro. Yeah. He, he felt differently. He goes, but who knows what kind of, you know, once again, I think tampering's alive and well, if nothing else. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're getting, you know, he may, he may have got, who knows? I don't want to accuse Texas of cheating. Wait, I don't care. Yeah, well, I don't care. Yeah, Texas cheated. They basically owe them like a trillion dollars. That's a kid. <laughs> I can accuse them of a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep having ugly orange. Yeah. Just right. the entire, entire thing. Just yeah. Just hideous. Hideous. So yeah, you, you know, and that's the thing we're gonna have to get used to as fans. Yeah. Is you're gonna have stuff like this. You know, you're gonna have the Trey Knoxes and Jalen Catalans and and Isaiah Nichols and and um all those guys that you you've started rooting for, you're starting to get behind, you know, and then all of a sudden they're gonna it's it's well it's free agency. Yeah. We've gone through it in NFL if you're an NFL fan, you've gone through it. If you're an NBA fan, you've gone through it, you know. Um and the, well, the NBA was even worse. You know, I mean, I, I was, I got to be where I was a fan of players and not teams in the NBA. It was just whoever my favorite players was playing for. 
Yeah. When I was younger, I was a Charles Barkley fan. So I, you know, liked Houston when he was there. I liked Phoenix when he was there. You know, um, I was a Shaq fan. So I liked the Heat when he was there. You liked a lot of teams if you were a Shaq fan. Yeah, well, I, I started I started losing track there for a while. but Like he played for Boston. I don't think people remember Shaq playing for Boston. Yeah. He played for 36. I think, didn't he with Boston? He had to wear 36. I think so. Something like that. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> but, um. But that's what we're – and that's what we're coming to. You know, college was that thing. You watch a guy come in as a recruit, you know, you start hearing about him as a recruit. You follow him in there. You watch him, you know, for four years or five years or whatever it lasts, and then you root for him when he goes pro somewhere. And we're not going to have that as much anymore. Yeah. No, the problem is, as Sam Pittman said, he goes, I think the transfer portal was – for a few reasons, and it's being abused so badly. Mm. Uh, like my coach leaves, I'm not happy with who they brought in. Like Ryan Mallett's a perfect example. Like Ryan Mallett signed with Michigan to be in a pro-style Bobby Petrino, mm. Brett Maliba type offense. Um, now, Petrino threw the ball a lot more than Brett, but they had, they had similar offenses. Mm. So he was designed, he was built for that type of offense. Well, they bring in Rich Ride, who's going to run more of your spread option, you know, kind of like what it's Arkansas. Runs. Back in that doesn't tie his shoes. Right. Yeah. I mean, he just yeah. go. And so he didn't fit, you know, he didn't fit. So that's what the transfer portal was, mm. was meant to be for. And I think also the and kids who were over recruited, mm. you know, like if someone had signed me. Um, to a Division One football scholarship, I never would have seen the field. I didn't see the field in Division Two, but that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm saying is, is for kids that they're over recruited, and also kids like this guy we signed up, Texas A&M Commerce, mm -hmm. who sounds like he may have been, he may have legit been under recruited. Yeah, and so you've got situations, but what is? It's not the NIL combination with with the transfer portal is running college football. Mm. It just, there's no, it, it's not, at least as we know it, it's going well, to survive. What we know. I, I'm not going to say, I think the verbiage is wrong there. I'm not going to say it's running it. What I'm going to say is it's changing it. Now it's going to change it into something different. And for some people that's going to be running it. Yeah. For others, it's going to be, just like free agency did in pro sports, you know, just like, you know, those kind of things, just like the, the bigger contracts have done in the pro sports. Um, it's going to change it. And for some people, it, it is going to run it. But some of it's going to be, you're going to either have to say, I'm going to stay a fan and, you know, this is the way it is now and I just got to get used to it. Or you're going to jump off ship. That's it. Yep. And, um, so far, I'm staying on the boat. I'm not going to get it. And I'm, as long as Arsenal's got a football team, I'm going to be a fan. I mean, it just it is what it is. I, I was a fan when they were 2-10. and 10, Well, so and I think, too, though, Clint, I think it can only go so far into being a professional league because you're going to have to keep connections with the colleges. Yeah. Okay. If you take away the connections with the colleges, you lose facilities. You lose um, a, a staff that is, you know, if you, if you lose connections with the colleges, you know, you got students that are, that are taping ankles and trainers yeah. and they're not getting paid to do it. You know, or it's their work study, you know, so you're paying them, you know, minimally very little money, but they're doing it because it's training them for their career. Right. And so you have a huge work staff for the TV video stuff, all that kind of stuff. Okay. You, you have all that. So if you go, if it goes too far, you're going to start losing connections with the colleges. And we may see that in the next year or two, because what's going to happen is, is people are going to quit giving 
money for buildings because they're needing to give it to NIL. And there's going to be a time when the colleges say, wait, 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 we're a college. We need buildings. And you know, and that's we one of my things. gets our attendance up. Yeah. Of course, you know, the one thing that a lot of people are concerned about, they think they have a rule against this, where if you're a sponsor for the program, you can't also sponsor NIL. I'm almost positive on that. Because, you know, at one point, you know, you got to think, if you're AT&T, and you're sponsoring Razorback football, like, well, but like you said, do I sponsor Razorback football or do I throw money into this NIL pot? To help get well, I, think, I think you can still give to the NIL pot, but um, I think the the difference is, and I may be wrong here, but the big difference is you can't write it off on your taxes the same way. Like if you give to the, to the um, Razorback Foundation, it's a tax deductible gift yeah if you you know if you pay for someone for nil it well it's a business expense but it go it goes into but it's still not it's not a uh, donation to a 501c3 or anything you know so and, and part of the reason all this is happening is the number one reason all this is happening is because the NCAA could not be trusted to do the right thing. They they were so unfair about things, you know. Like, like NIL is a good thing. Me and you have had so many conversations with quality young men mm. because of NIL. Mm. You know, uh, you know, Reed Bauer, Landon Jackson, Chris Poopal, Michael Turner, all them guys. The reason they were able to come on and talk to us was because of NIL. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for it because we wouldn't have had these opportunities without it. But, you know, you had, but when they make bad decisions like they made with Terrell Pryor, you know, the brother got a tattoo for an autograph. Mm -hmm. It's a memorabilia. Who cared? You know, I mean, I mean, who, and then they basically ruined the kid's college career the next year. Yeah. Because, Tattoos. Mm -hmm. You know what? If I could sign an autograph on like my cowboy hat and give it to somebody and get something I wanted for it, you know what I'm gonna do? Yeah. Here you go. Well, and, and <clears throat> same thing with the transfer at first. I mean, we looked at it. What was the your buddy Connor Vanover? Yeah. Um, I think him and JD Note both had to sit out a season. Mm -hmm. from transferring because of the transfer rules while you had just um justin fields transfer from georgia ohio state immediately eligible yeah they wouldn't enforce it they would not enforce it evenly mm -hmm. and so they had to so they basically had to create a rule they had to create this well rule. and once again i i, mean, I don't want to harp on this but i've said it before on here it's really going to auto correct itself when we get the, however it ends up being, but when it gets to be a, these super conferences that are going to happen and it's going to be, it's going to be a separation between the power, you know, the, the power, what's the power five now with these super conferences, however many teams are in that, then there's going to be a difference. And then there's going to be the next group, right? And then yeah. they're going to, what's going to happen is that the super conferences, they're going to come up with their own entity like the NCAA to, to do the regulations and rules for that new thing. And that's going to, and that's where you're going to see some auto correcting happen. And within IL, that's when, when the transfer portal, you're going to see some new rules come up because they're going to be in the schools that are similar are going to be all in the same boat, okay? No, you and you know what? And this is stuff me and you've been talking about for two years on this podcast. Yeah. I mean, the stuff we said was going to happen is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, as it, me and you, we, we've talked about this. We see your stuff so all the time. We've been talking about that people are slowly starting to talk about because it's happening. And I do think, like in that Patrick Netherton episode I talked about two years ago, we're talking about the NCAA is always going to be a thing because we're going to want someone to run volleyball. We're going to want somebody to run soccer. 
But I do think what's going to happen is NCAA football is going to withdraw mm. the NCAA. There'll be a college football, but I don't think it's going to be a part of the NCAA. No. I think that's coming sooner rather than later. Yeah. I think that, you know, and I think, you know, especially, you know, we talked about the playoffs. You know, we're going to the 12-team playoffs. It just – the bowls ain't going to be the bowls anymore. Yeah. Just, just not. Yeah. It's going to be something different. But I think, you know, that gives you that gives you a reason to keep fighting later into the season because you're still playoff contention. And if they get rid of the bowls, then what you'll see is, you know, you'll see kids start to, you know, opt out earlier in the season, I think. Mm. I mean, just it's not – I mean, the opt-outs and all that, it is not – it's it's here to stay. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Now, um, changing the subject a little bit to uh, basketball. Who shooting hoops? Um, Hogs play UNC Asheville tonight. So, um, another game they should win. Yeah. Jordan Walsh has been. Stepping up big time right. since Brazel went down. He did. I had a great game at Little Rock, the the Little Rock blackout game. <laughs> no, only place you could get it was radio uh, for some s- dumb reasons. Um, but <clears throat> this team <clears throat> keeps coming, man. This is a good, good basketball team that has the potential to win it all. Mm. Just there's no other way to put it. This when you're talking about the best teams in the country, they're in the conversation. Yeah. Wholeheartedly believe it. Uh, they they have a squad that can win the entire thing. And they've got a squad that can get bounced in the round of 32. Yeah. You know, it just because when you get in, when you get in, you just got to get in. And then you hope for the best. But th- this is an NCAA tournament team who I think has the potential to win the entire thing. Yeah. Um, you know, Nick Smith, it is like everybody reads so much into Nick Smith, no matter what happens to him. Like there was a rumor going around that he's out for the season again. Yeah. And apparently he's like, Muslim's like, no, he's fine. Yeah. I mean, because you, it's one of those when you got a bad will like he does, once the game's at hand, you take him out. When you're up 15 to 20 with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, there's no reason to put him in the game. You know, I mean. Especially when you're not even in conference play yet. No, you're not even in conference play. It's not, you know, it's, he's fine. You know, he, so I think, you know, he's doing what he should with an abundance of caution. And us uh, us Twitter experts, we need to we need to back off a little bit. Yeah, you got you got to like what you're seeing from this team. They're they're gelling. You're seeing improvement from players already. Um, and so we'll see. Because um, it's usually not till about now that most of teams seem to start figuring it out. And well, it's like, a lot of times it's once they get in a few games into conference play. Yeah, I don't, and I don't think. I mean, they're not done making dumb freshman mistakes. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're just not. I mean, it's going to keep happen, right. happening. Um, they'll be just like, what were you thinking moments all the time? But, you know, you've got – I think you've got a mix of older guys who are transfers like Ricky Council and the young guys and Devo and Kamani Johnson's been playing good in his limited minutes. Um, so, I man, there's a lot to be encouraged about on this team. Mm-hmm. Just a lot to be encouraged about. Yeah. Oh man, I agree. Um, they're fun to watch play, and they're gonna they're gonna be even funner as as the season goes on. Um, you know, because they've played they they've played some teams, and they said don't sleep on the schedule that Arkansas has played. They they said we played like a ridiculous number of right now tournament teams. Mm. Like I think we played more teams that are gonna be in the tournament than we played not. Now, since we played them, Creighton's been playing bad. Yeah. And that Wait. keeps hurting our rankings. But once we get into SEC play, that'll right. that'll fix itself. Yeah. 
Now, the, now we don't need to sleep on them. There was a it was a bad day in the SEC. Yeah. Um, I think Ole Miss lost to North Alabama. Yeah, yeah. We played North Alabama in the Gulf South Conference. Now, of course, they've since moved up, you know, because uh, Florence, Alabama is a booming college town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I know we don't talk about this a lot, um, but there's been some uh, big big things happening in high school football in Arkansas. Like I said, I know we don't talk about this a lot, but I just wanted to mention it. Clay Toddy, who was 25 years the coach at Rising, is now gone to win Arkansas to be the, the head coach there. The Yellow Jackets. The win, yeah, or as Patrick Netherton, uh, our buddy Patrick, he uh, he used to call games for Arkadelphia when we were in college. And Arkadelphia played win in the um, playoffs, and he kept calling them the lose Yellow Jackets. <laughs> but um, but that's a big that's a big step, man, for a guy. Twenty five years been at Rising, of course, it's small school at Rising, and then now he's moving up into five A, following following oh, uh, Dan Campbell, Coach Campbell used to pass maybe one time a game, if that. But um, that's going to be an interesting interesting uh, change there for uh, for Toddy. That's a that's a I don't think a lot of people were expecting that too much. So anyway. he's probably at the point in his life. He's like, well, I'm not going to do it now. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And, and that's a place, you know, they, they had some drama. I don't know if you've heard about it, but the, you know, they, uh, Van Paschel was forced out because uh, it was dumb. It was a dumb thing. Um, I read something about, I don't remember the story when it got a rehab. Um, my buddy Michael McDaniel played for um, Paschal and still real good friends with him and his family. And he went to the school board meeting and <clears throat> there were some things they said Paschal did. Um, but what it came down to was personalities not getting along, you know, people and people wanting him out kind of thing. And so anyway, but it was a real dramatic thing. Okay. It was a five hour school board meeting and so that's what surprised me a little bit about uh toddy going there because yeah that's they still win still made the playoffs without their good coach you know good head coach so they got a good team they got good talent you can win you can win and win you know yeah. they, 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 oh no i play i played college ball with some guys from there they, they they have some players go through there yeah you can you can you can do well there they have some athletes so it's a good move for him in that aspect, but it is kind of a tough situation to jump into because it is he is jumping right into some some drama, some drama. Always the drams. Always the drama. But um, yeah, man. Uh, so the hogs, you know, right now there's a lot of um. You know, right now we're kind of in this uh, wait and see mode and everything, aren't we? We're kind we of really are, what, but it, it's what's it's, basketball going to do? What's what's going to be the changes to football? Why, how are the, you know what new additions are we going to end up getting? Because once the bowl games are done, then the transfer portal is really going to get hot. Yeah, uh, even more so. Yeah, I mean, because I, I think that's when you really you'll you'll see more movement. When when's the portal close? Like the fourth? Uh, or is it the ninth? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So we still have time, you know, to go. And I think you're going to start seeing more additions. You know, Pittman did address, you know, in that same press conference, some of the needs they have. They're going to be looking for a veteran linebacker. Mm -hmm. um, now, the Liberty Bowl is the next week. Is there anything you're really excited about? What What are you really looking forward to seeing in the Liberty Bowl? Is there a particular position group? Because for me, I'm really interested in how the linebackers play. Because it's going to be your first game without Drew Sanders or, or Bumper Pool. Mm -hmm. you know, the first game of the post-Bumper Pool era, 
I, I'm, I'm looking to see it how Manny Powell, um, Crook, and Poopaw, how them three hold it down. I agree with you. I think uh, I think the defense as a whole, just seeing um, without pool, without his leadership over there, you know, because here you are, no pool, no Catalan. You've already not had Catalan, right? But no pool. You don't have Sanders. Um, this is where people like who you think is going to be the leaders next year, which I'm, I'm sure they will be. But like Poopal, Jordan Dominic, where they're going to have to step up. Hudson Clark, um, Quincy McAdoo. See what you know after he's got more. Yeah, now I'm looking to see what he does after a full. You know, practices. Yeah, I mean, basically like going through a little fall camp. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. I think just the defense as a whole. See how they do. Um. I'm also going to be anxious to see the intensity that we play with. Yeah. Because, like it's been said by lots of reporters, I think, and been asked to Pittman and everybody, you know, Kansas is coming in with the with the kind of the fire in their belly because this is the first time they've been in a bowl in a long time. And so they're ex- they're excited to be at the Liberty Bowl. For Arkansas, we're kind of, well, at least it's a bowl close to home. <laughs> you know, we're not as excited about the Liberty Bowl. And so um, teams that are like that, a lot of times don't bring the intensity into the game. So is Pittman going to get the intensity that we need to see out of these guys? Are they going to go into it thinking, I don't care if it is it, just at Memphis, and I don't care if it is just Kansas we're playing. We're going to go out here and we're going to fight hard to win this game. Or are they going to walk into it like they played Missouri State or Liberty? You know, what's what's it going to be? So we'll see. Um, no, it's going to be interesting to see, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to the game, um, providing that this finally all clears up. Well, hopefully it won't be as cold as uh, – I'm hoping not. I'm uh, about to go buy me some thermal yeah, East Carolina game. I would have died if it wasn't for some hot chocolate. Yeah. I just just having the hot chocolate there to put your hands on and to drink it kept me alive, I think. Man, that was a cold, cold game. Well, Clint, it's Christmas time. It's uh right next week, Christmas will be over. We'll be talking right. about your stuff. Um but uh What's your uh, what's your Razorback Christmas wish for this year? That the portal will be kind to us. The portal will be kind. That is that is my wish that all our dreams come true via the. <coughs> I'm gonna ask Santa for a NCAA basketball championship. Hey, I'm going big that's time. a good one. I'll take it too. I'm going big time. Yeah, I'm ready to get as fired up about basketball as we was when Oliver Miller yeah. played and when Corliss played, and uh, and I think we are, you know, we're to that skill level now for this team. Um, but I'm I'm ready for that. I'm ready to I'm ready for a basketball season where we go through SEC play with sold out home games all year long. That's that's gonna be fun. And it was fun that the Little Rock game was sold out. It, yeah. it really was. It just and then we finally played well there. Yeah. Well, I heard them talking on the buzz, you know, about how Arkansas used to be play a couple games in Pine Bluff, a couple games in Little Rock. Yeah. But then we beat Michael Jordan in Pine Bluff. Yeah. That U.S. Reed shot was. Yeah. Was in at um the Pine Bluff Convention Center, I think. Well, in Pine Bluff. I guarantee you'd have a hard time getting Michael Jordan going back to Pine Bluff. Yeah. No, thank you. Be a hard time, hard time getting Michael Jordan to go back to Arkansas. Yeah, like, what? Yeah. No. He's like, yeah, I don't. <laughs> He's in the, they don't go to flyover states anymore. Hard pass. No. Yeah. Well, Clint, another thing I wanted to bring up real quick. Sure. 
30 years. No. 20, 25 years. 25 years. Okay, I'd have been 21. I believe it's 25 years. All right. That we lost Chris Farley. Wow. Sad stuff. It is uh, sad. On that, uh, on David Spade and Dana Carvey's uh, podcast, they've been doing uh, bringing in some of their old friends from SNL and other places, and they've been doing a like a and, and some of his family. They brought in Chris Farley's mom and his brothers, two of his brothers, and um, doing like remembrance of him from uh, uh, from his. Uh, you know, just all the different things he did and said and all that kind of stuff. What's your favorite? <clears throat> when you think of Chris Farley, what's your memory of him? What, what's the first thing that jumps out? Oh, man, Matt, Matt Foley. That's mine too. You know, Foley and then Tommy Boy's a close second. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> I read a thing about Chris Farley the other day, and this totally off subject about Chris Farley. But you, we, I think everybody knew that he had done, he had started off, he was going to be the voice of Shrek. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know he had 90% of it done. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, it was done. Like, he, he had, it was 90%. They, they, they tried to get his brother to do that last 10% of it. Yeah. Like, it, <clears throat> it wasn't going to be, um, if his brother would have said yes, Mike Myers never would have been Shrek. Yeah, because they they went to him and said, "Hey, could you? Your voice is close to his. You can do his voice. We just have a few things we need you to say, then we can finish this up." And uh, his brother said it was because it was too soon. He said, "No, I don't. I don't feel comfortable doing that." Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I like I knew he had done it. Like I knew that he was the original. <laughs> I didn't know. Um. He was supposed to be cable guy too. Yeah. In fact, he got paid for cable guy. And they never acted in it. But he got paid. He got paid some because he was going to be. Um, but he had to do, I think he had to do black sheep. <coughs> contract with when he did Tommy Boy, he had already contracted with Paramount to do two movies. <coughs> and so Black Sheep was. The follow up. Yeah. Um, one of the things they talked about too was, I think it was um, one of the guys they interviewed said that they were talking to Jonah Hill, and Jonah Hill says said that Tommy Boy is his favorite movie of all time. He said, and Jonah Hill's a serious actor director. You know, I mean, yeah. he, he's he's done a lot of goofball stuff. But he's, you know, he's also done some independent stuff and things like that. He said it's his favorite movie ever. And that um, he said when Tommy's in the boat talking to his dad by himself, he said he he still cries every time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, uh, such a funny guy, such a tragic story, man. It really is. And, you know, and I think not that, you know, I think he struggled with mental health and addiction. Um, oh, yeah. And if you and if you find yourself in that boat where you're, you're struggling with your mental health or addiction, don't, don't be scared to reach out and ask for help. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's like the worst thing, not to bring it down to, to a serious note here at the end of the podcast, but yeah. you know what you're, you know, it, your family loves you. <coughs> yeah. Your friends love you. Yeah. And and your friend, family and friends are going to be here to help you. Yeah. If they're not, you know what? Big C and bigger TR. Yeah. So if you need if you need help if you're dealing with some stuff and you need to reach out to us. Me and Travis are always here. Um, I think I can speak for you there, Big T. Oh yeah, for sure. But, but yeah, I mean, it just if you need help, don't be scared to reach out and get the help because. Trust me, people would rather the world's better for having you in it. Yeah. Even you, Robert Branscombe. <laughs> no, I'm joking. And Robert Branscombe, great guy. I love the guy to death. But it's fucking with a hard time. Hometown roofer. 
Walk down roofing for all your roofing needs. All your roofing needs. All your roofing needs. Metal roofing, shingled roofing. They got it. They, they got it. Holler at them. Well, Clint, Merry Christmas, buddy. Merry Christmas. Enjoy it. Enjoy time with family and and all that. Say hi to Tom and Sue for me. I will. I will. Yeah, I had a and uh, uh, all the guys Christmas lights done. I'm gonna drive by and see the finished product tonight. Oh, good, good. Uh, yeah. We'll be happy to show them off to you. <clears throat> and folks, don't forget you know to like and share. Yeah, you know yeah. what they have there? What's that? Little Debbie's Christmas tree cake. So I'm going to go in too. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Just like, yes, I'm like, hallelujah. That's right. And someone at a, we had a little church um, Christmas party, you know, did finger food type stuff. Yeah. And someone made some Little Debbie Christmas tree <laughs> dip. Oh, yeah, mom made that last year. It is. Oh, my goodness. I could have ate the entire thing. Yeah, well, I would have died of some sort of insulin thing or something probably, but yeah, um, it was good stuff, man. Anyway, folks, like and share the podcast. Uh, well, hopefully, we're working on some interviews to have coming up in the near future. Uh, hopefully, those will work out. And um, But we, once again, love getting on here talking. Razorbacks, and um, it's Christmas time. Lots of things going on. Keep rooting them on. But like and share this. Uh, if you want to, we'd love to see some comments on what's your best Christmas gift you ever had. What's the Christmas gift you never got that you wish you had? Um, t- tell us about it. Let us know what you think. And um, just have a great Christmas with your family. Remember the reason for the season. And um, thankful for what Jesus did for us by coming to earth and uh, we can celebrate that and whatever you believe. Uh, but, but um, there's a reason it's called Christmas. So um, anyway, Clint, got your cowboy hat back on. So long buckaroos. We're ready to ride. Let's ride. You can. Sweat. Sweat. One. Filthy. When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no harvest till I hurt Cry in your kingdom come Listen I wake up in the morning I bow my head to pray Mama told me if I don't Ain't nothing gonna change These prayers breaking up hard rock